What makes one set of things larger than another? Usually, we can count, but what about something infinite? We can't exactly count to infinity, so what makes one infinity larger than another? Let's say you're playing an exhilarating game of musical chairs. There's only one chair left, and the music's about to end. You can practically taste victory. The game seems simple. There are more players than there are chairs. But how do we know? We could count the players and then the chairs separately to verify that there are more players than there are chairs. Or we can cut out the middleman. The act of sitting uniquely pairs each player to exactly one chair, except for one unlucky loser. Since we have an unpaired player, we know that there must be more players than there are chairs, without even counting. If everyone had a chair to sit in, we'd have an equal number of chairs and players, and a boring game. This means to figure out if any two sets of things have the same size, all you need to do is create a unique pairing between their items. There's no need to count, and if you can't, then one set must be larger than the other. Let's use this to compare infinities. Intuitively, the set of just even numbers should be half the size of the naturals, but they're actually the same size. We can uniquely pair each natural to its double and each even to its half. Since there's a unique pairing between the two infinite sets, these infinities must be the same size. In fact, with some clever pairing, you can even prove that the naturals are the same size as all the integers. When German mathematician Georg Cantor laid the groundwork for these results in the early 1870s, he wondered if there were any larger infinities out there that couldn't be paired with the naturals. And in 1873, he had his answer, decimals. Imagine, for the sake of argument, that you could pair the naturals with every single decimal between 0 and 1, so that you have an infinite but complete list of all the decimals from 0 to 1, exactly how it doesn't really matter. Yet, Cantor noticed that you could always create a new decimal guaranteed not to be on your complete list. Take the first digit of the first decimal on your list, 7, and make the new decimal's first digit anything but 7, say 5. Then look at the second digit of the second decimal on your list, 2, and make the new decimal's second digit anything but 2, say 8. If you keep on doing this, you'll have a new decimal that disagrees with the first decimal in the first place, second in the second place, and so on. It disagrees with all the numbers on your list in at least one place, so it can't be on your list. That means it's unpaired, so the infinity of decimals between 0 and 1 is greater than the infinity of all the naturals. Some infinities really are bigger than other infinities. While Cantor initially faced harsh criticism for his ideas, in the end, they were just too simple and beautiful to ignore. And that's what math is, starting with an intuition as simple as counting, seeing where it will take you, and what beautiful truths about the universe it can reveal.